ಪರಂ ದಾತಾರಂ ಸರ್ವಸಂಪದ ಲೋಕಾಭಿರಾಮ ಶ್ರೀರಾಮ ಭೂಯೋ ಭೂಯೋ ನಮಾಮ್ಯಹಂ ಜೈ ಶ್ರೀಮನ್ನಾರಾಯಣ ಜಿಯೋ ವಿ ಆಫರ್ ಅವರ್ ಮಂಗಳ ಸಹಸ್ರಂಸ್ ಟು ಆಲ್ ದ ಟೀಮ್ ಮೆಂಬರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸತ್ಸಂಗ್ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿದ್ಯಾಭಾರತಿ ಸತ್ಸಂಗ್ ದ ಮೆಂಬರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ organization and also the devotees who are assembling this evening session here the other day when we met with the team of organizers who are conducting the regular satsangs here explained how this uh, satsang was formed they said just casually sitting discussing good things they formed a profound group of devotees who continued great activities by the grace of Sri Pujya Jagat Guru Shringeri Acharya and thus they are spreading the messages of Acharya and also helping people in their promotion in spiritual life. We add our Mangala Sasanams to them all to get the grace of Acharyas. As it is said in our scriptures, ಆಚಾರ್ಯವಾನ್ ಪುರುಷೋ ವೇದ ತಾವದೇವ ಚಿರಂ ಯಾವನ್ ನ ವಿಮೋಕ್ಷೇ ಛಂದೋಗ್ಯ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಮೇಜರ್ ಉಪನಿಷತ್ಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೈನ್ ಟು ಅಸ್ ಆಸ್ ಹೌ ಎ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ವಿಲ್ ಗೆಟ್ ದ ಅಲ್ಟಿಮೇಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಕಾಲ್ ಎಸ್ ಸ್ಯಾಲ್ವೇಷನ್ ಆರ್ ಮೇ ಬಿ ರಿಲೀಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದಿಸ್ ಬಾಂಡೇಜ್ ಆಚಾರ್ಯವಾನ್ ಪುರುಷೋ ವೇದ ಎ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ಸ್ person a purusha when he gets the grace of acharyas purusha doesn't mean a man or a male person purusha is the one who lives in the body cuz the definition goes like puri sete iti purusha the body has been explained as a kingdom a puram as lord krishna explains in bhagavad gita navadwara pure dehi one dwells in this body where there are nine doors to enter in or to quit so this is called as a puram as long as we live in this puram this is called or the one who lives here is called as a purusha sometimes it may be a male body sometimes it may be a female body even when it is a human body or a body of an animal or a bird or a plant in that sense is called a puram only leaving other species of course we talk about the human life so one becomes a purusha when he surrender himself to the feet of acharya and gets his grace so that's how veda says he becomes a a purusha when he becomes an acharya van what happens it is said tasya tavadeva chiram yavanna vimokshye for him for that soul as our friend just mentioned about the soul for that particular soul that's the end when he gets released from the bondage but to get the release it's the grace of acharya which is very essential why because it is they who show us the path of realization our guruji used to give an example a beautiful example when you surrender to the feet of acharya and the grace of acharya leads you to the eternal goal like a rat or a mouse that enters the suitcase of a person going to america a student went to the embassy to get the visa and he tried time and again like mohammed gajni probably 18 times and of course ultimately he got visa and he packed his baggage and he purchased ticket and then he reached america somewhere probably new york or chicago or somewhere and from there again he flew to some other place and he was received by his friends there went to the friends room and opened the suitcase came out ticketless traveler when he was packing the suitcase he noticed that a rat entered that suitcase somehow it came landed in america without visa nobody questions this person when he was fired with the, by the people there he should come back but this rat becomes a permanent citizen a legal hire for the local traditions 
Swamiji used to give this as, as an example. Rat doesn't know to whom the suitcase belongs. And rat doesn't know where he's going. And even the owner of the suitcase doesn't know that who is in the suitcase. Still, the power of surrender is such a great thing. Takes that particular rat to a place where this, this student is craving to reach. So, it's needed. If you surrender to the feet of Acharya, of course, knowingly or unknowingly, you can definitely get the eternal bliss. You can reach the ultimate goal. So, Acharya is needed to prove that when even the Lord himself descended through this earth in the form of Rama or Krishna, chose Acharyas. Rama surrendered to Vasistha initially and guided by the great sage Viswamitra. Not that Rama doesn't know the Sastras or archery. It is to show how important the Acharya is. Of course, Rama always used to say that I am a man. Atmanam manusham manye. But Krishna was not like that. Time and again he said, I am God, supreme. He is not a good player. <laughs> he is not a good actor also. <laughs> Rama was a good actor, you know, so he knows how to how to play a man. But Krishna, at times, you know, just he gets outburst and says, I'm God. So he said time and again that I'm God incarnate. I came just for you. Avajananti maam mudhaha manushi tanumasritam. Many a time he said so. Even he approached Darga Acharya when he was young for Akshara Abhyasam. And when he grew up, then he approached a great Acharya by name Sandipani. Not he doesn't know the Sastras. It's only to prove that a, a Guru is, is very, very essential for anyone who born on this earth. So Guru is the one who shows us the path, who guides us in needs. Maybe it is a mundane need like when we are suffering with or suffering from problems as just our friend mentioned you know when we are just carried away with the worldly things and we are just enveloped with sorrows then how to come off those sorrows and when we are lost spiritually and trying to reach back to that stage or to a plane again it's the Acharya who guides us so my friends we always surrender to Acharyas to understand who we are and the purpose of our life. The topic which is given to us is to speak on the purpose of the life. It's really interesting topic. Before just talking something about that, we would like to ask you a question. Should I take that liberty of asking? Usually during discourses, they come prepared only to listen, not to talk. <laughs> but... I feel it is uh, uh, it's a joyful thing, you know, if you also start speaking with us. Should I ask you just a couple of questions? That's good. I want to know the meaning of a word from you. We people speak a great deal about life. My life is so comfortable. My life is not. My life is so painful. My life is spiritually elated and so on and so forth. So, I want to know what's the re meaning of the word or probably the definition of the word life. L-I-F-E. Anyone? The definition of the word life. No introduction is needed. Straightforward answer, that's all. Now, do you know the meaning of, do you know the definition for the word life? Yes. Okay, thanks. Hario, blessed by Ishwara, the Jeeva enjoying the Jagat, or to put it technically, blessed by Adi Daivam, the Adhyatmam enjoying the Adi Bhutam in Gita language. That is life. There are, there are some of friends. Life is triple E, sir. Expectations, emotions, and experiences. Mm, then a tree is not probably having any life, it seems. I mean the emotions full of emotions, experiences and expectations. Uh, do you believe the tree is a living being? I'm not uh, telling the tree. Three is. Tree. Triple E. Triple E. 
tree. I am asking about the tree. Tree. Does tree, tree live? No, it is achit. It is achit. Tree? Yes. Oh, doesn't grow? It grows, but it is achit. It does, doesn't Pure grow. life? When we give a definition, it should fix everywhere. Anywhere you want to apply, not only just to human beings, wherever there is life, it should match. That's the definition, right? Life means love, yell, interest, feeling, event. Then what is a tiger? What is a tiger? A lion. I don't want you to speak with e each other. I want you to give me answer. Body, body is different. Life is different. In body, there is life. Life? Hmm. Hmm. Go ahead, sir. Life is you. What's that you? Can you explain? Can you give a straight? Being. Being. Okay. Interesting. We talk a great deal about life not knowing what it is. <laughs> now, not much bothering you. <laughs> I'd like to say, yes, Madam said to some extent, like she reached to 60% and uh, somebody said there, life is a journey of a soul through a body. That journey of the soul may be through a human body, may be through a body of an animal or a bird or some sort of insect or even at times through inanimate objects like stones. According to Upanishad, the Upanishad which just I mentioned before Chandogya, there is a Sankalpa before starting the creation. Anena jivena atmana nupravisya nama rupe vyakaravani is a divine sankalpa that makes the world to appear. Word means anena jivena atmana anupravisya. I allow the atma, what we people call in English maybe as a soul, I allow the soul to pass through a body and I follow that soul. That is called Anu Pravesa. Pravesa is entering. Anu Pravesa is following. You know there are gated communities. When they go to that gate, the gate opens. So when a person staying in that community goes because he knows the number or maybe having a remote number with him, so the gate opens. But before the gate closed, another car also can just follow that. It takes a little time. We call it as Anu Pravesa. Anu Pravesa means following one person when one is entering through something. So the Sankalpa in Chandogya Upanishad is like this. Anena Jivena Atmana Anu Pravesya Along with the Jiva. I also being the indweller of that enter this. And thus I create Nama Rupe. Vyakaravani, as I enter along with the soul, thus created a name and a form. Means, when you see an object with a name and also with a form, there are two things present. One is the Jiva and the other one is one who did Anupravesa along with the Jiva. Now, what do you take? A stone, a tree, an animal, if a bird, or a man, a deva, anybody in that sense, any object is having some jiva in it and it's a living being, a living being. Swamiji, what are you talking about? What about the stones? Do they have life? According to that Upanishad, as it is. Our Vedic scholars are sitting right in front of us. No, another Upanishad called Aitriya, where it is said, it seems the creator of this universe took a sankalpa and then he created many, many things. What he created? The Upanishad says, Satchatya cha bhavatu niruktancha niruktancha nilayanancha nilayanancha satyancha nirutancha satyam abhavatu yadidhan kincha tat satyam Krate Veda says there are many things in this world few appear as if they have life and few appear as if there is no life few are animated and few are inanimate objects 
For few we give names because we are able to see probably a few things with microscopic eye. But there are many things that are unseen for which we just can't give any name at all. But still, they are also existing which are called aniruktam. Niruktancha, aniruktancha, nilayanancha, anilayanancha. Few are stationed, fixed, like mountains. But many things are moving. Anilayanamcha. So many things are there in which there is a force called life. Then you may question, when there is a life, when there is a jiva, why the mountains and stars are not moving, stones? The answer is simple. We people here are sitting in this room, closing all the doors. Somebody sitting outside, or somebody moving outside on the road, they may not know that here is a hall, and here is a group of people, and here is a mic, and here is a Swamiji who is giving a discourse, and there are few people listening to that discourse, because all the doors are closed. <clears throat> because they do not know that something is happening in this room, and uh, he just can't say that there's no one in the room. Nothing is happening in the room. He didn't see that. He could not see that because he is somewhere else. Same thing with his bodies. We possess. We have bodies, the human bodies, with perfect windows through which the knowledge is exhibited. Through eyes, yes, we see the figures, colors. Through the ears, we perceive sounds. Because these are the windows kept open, so we will be able to appreciate the presence of some power inside. But for a stone, having closed all the doors, the life force cannot be experienced. It doesn't mean that there is no life. There is life which we cannot perceive. For few beings like trees, system is the same as we have. But for us, we have the feet allow us to walk but for them that system is closed so from that window we just can't experience things or the inner life force cannot move but we have to accept that there is life even in stones and mountains probably if you have experience with the stapatis who make the vigrahas for temples they talk about three types of stones male stones and Female stones like Upumsila or Strisila and Napumsaka Sila. When they make the male deities, they use the Pumsila. But when they make the female deities, they choose Strisila. When they select stone for flooring, for staircases, for steps and so on, they choose Napumsaka Sila. How do they know that? By touch. Probably by sound. Understand. We heard, of course, we didn't know that, but we heard in olden days they constructed big temples using just stone, even for the Rajagopuras. In few temples, the top portion of the Rajagopura, probably which is having the width of uh, 18 feet, just made with a single stone. So we wonder how they were able to raise it to that extent when there were no cranes. What technique probably they must have followed? Then they said, Swamiji, these uh, silas, pumsila or stri sila or something like that, they are very easy to lift during night because the sila sleeps. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's a strange thing to hear, you see. Sila sleeps? Are you crazy? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> but it is what they say, basing upon their Silpa Sastra. It is the Sastra that talks about the stages of the stone. How does it function and why and when. So they said during the time when the Sila sleeps Swamiji, we lift it to the height required. We felt happy anyway because it goes in tune with our Vedic literature. <laughs> because according to Veda, even in a stone, even in a sand grain, there is a soul. There are the windows of that particular body 
were closed. Why? Reason is different, of course. I am not discussing about the reasons why doors are open for few uh, beings like us and why for few beings like them the doors are kept closed and by whom is not my subject not to discuss. But all that I can say in Bhagavad Gita in uh, in 15th chapter Lord Krishna very clearly says Hey Arjun it's the soul migrates from one body to the other with few plastic cards with it. You know when the people working in multinational companies you know when they go from one country to the other or when they move from one place to the other and nowadays everywhere when you have the ATM card with you you need not carry you know any wallet in your pocket and you not carry the notes also all that you need to carry is the card on which probably you may be having your own numbers and you can draw any money you have in your account same thing with a soul when it travels from body to the other srotram chakshuhu sparisyanam cha rasanam Grana mevacha Indriyani manaschayam vishayan upasevate While experiencing the things in a body, he is using all these six instruments five external instruments and one inner instrument. Ajahn Sariram yadavapnoti yichapi ut. Kramati Ishwaraha Grihitvaitani Samyati Vayur Gandhaniva Ashayat. He gave a beautiful example for that, saying that all these souls, while going out from a body, carries with them a few things, what he said, the six sensory organs. Five Ganendriyas, one leader. They take all these sticks with them from one body to the other. There they start their own fresh account, keeping the old balance, whether it's a minus balance or plus balance, whether it is a punya or papa karma. How? Hey Krishna, when the soul goes out, I should see that, right? But I am not able to see anyone. Many a time I ask doctors. When they take a patient to the... Of course, not our doctor, because our doctor's job is not uh, no, dealing with heart or lungs or liver or kidneys. <laughs> a little bit tension-free job, because only dealing with the eyes. <laughs> Oh, he may be having some other tensions, you know, <laughs> but not critical as the other organs of the body are. So when one patient was admitted into the hospital and the relatives of the patient were just sitting outside, doctor said, I have to wait for one hour, then only I can say something. No problem, doctor, we are waiting here for your word. They waited, waited, waited. Doctor came out and said, because he's the nice brother of Maharaja anyway. <laughs> so anybody enters his hand, so he saves that soul anyway. <laughs> so that person was helped. And doctor came out and said, Friend, I am so sorry. What happened, doctor? And he passed away. No, doctor, we are here. We didn't see him at all. <laughs> Yes, we can see. Because soul is not a thing that can be seen by our eyes. And uh, the things that he carries with him like senses and all the stocks of karma can be seen at all. Because they are always in the software form. So <laughs> we just can't see them at all. But Lord Krishna very clearly said, Sariram yadavapnoti grihitva etani samyati so he carries all these things with him and thus he migrates to the other body it means soul makes journeys from one body to the other 
no matter whether they are human bodies or some other bodies now what we call as life is the period when it's just making its journey through a body if it is through a human body yes you can call he is or she is a human being or if it is an animal like things then you call it say an animal or whether it is a bird then you call it is a bird or insect but when the journey is up then the name you give is a worm maybe it's a man or a woman or an animal or a bird it's a corpse it's a dead body no matter whether it's a male dead body or a female dead body it's only for the medical students not for you and me so journey of the soul through a body is called as life when it starts when it ends we know when it ends because doctor declares yes it's over because he is licensed to do both <laughs> i'm not saying anything to a doctor you know but you know it it it's doctors who said you know they're licensed killers <laughs> so they have a right to say yes he is living and he is not living we may be living but if doctor says he is not then nobody accepts you that you are a living guy <laughs> so it is funny <laughs> but it is true some people have to go to the doctor always and doctor give me a certificate that i am living so that i can get my pension <laughs> if this person goes directly to the person who gives money still he won't accept you know he says get the certificate <laughs> so doctors you know are they who certify you whether you are living or not <laughs> we know when the life is stopped but we don't know when it is started and exactly at what time can you say the second question i am asking you is can you tell me something about when you declare that life started you can't doctor sir can you tell me something about it please <laughs> when the life started in what month before that it's not exactly during the pregnancy time still before even before the zygote is formed when it is in the form of a cell in a human body the moment the cell formed then the life started life started on his own because the cell is independent by itself in a body but it's independent though but it cannot function on its own it starts making his own body when it took the form of a zygote still it's independent no it's not independent it is still depending upon the mother but when the umbilical cord is cut then the soul in that particular body starts declaring his own identity till then even in a train also the conductor never questions you for a second ticket 
you know when the mother is carrying the baby in the womb then even you go to a cinema theater they never ask you for second ticket <laughs> even half ticket no and if you get in the bus still they won't ask you but when the cord is cut the umbilical cord is cut and when the baby is seen physically with our naked eyes then they say yes you have to take another ticket it's only moving independently but life started long before long long before long long before i don't know how long before it is because i don't know how long before the cell formed in a human body before forming his own body as a baby life started then and life ends after becoming an independent person of course for every cell there is a beginning time and there is an ending time too but we won't consider them all as you know lives because they are not seen at all but we consider that person as a living entity when that particular soul owned a body came out of the mother's womb and started functioning in this nature then we call s x is there and the name of the x is something that's how the life is visible seen by us and experienced by us so bandho life is a journey through a body at times a micro body and we see the macro bodies these are the macro form of that particular life of that particular soul but when it is in the form of a cell we can't see that we can't appreciate that this is life we are talking about the life right it's a journey when you get into the car and when you are traveling in the car before getting out the car the time is called as a journey so when you are home and nobody considers that you are in journey but when you literally enter the car and before getting out of the car that middle period is called as journey period so also for the soul we are now traveling and i am traveling in a boat and every one of us are in the same journey of course distances are different probably i covered 50 miles out of 100 and some other probably you must have covered 23 25 50 60 70 80 you know this is how we are covering the the distance but we are in a vehicle and the vehicle is called body but you are in this body and you are leading a life when you are in a body or in a vehicle maybe it's a bus boat in the waters or in the space in an aeroplane there will be definitely some sort of turbulences when we started from home our uh, uh, our car was you know stuck in traffic yes what can we do at times it it so happens like that but in other places when we travel yes the roads are so rough at times the roads are so fine wonderful roads but still something comes on the way and then sudden break and then we hit the front seat at times even that also happens when you are in a boat in waters then there will be tides sometimes low tides sometimes high tides 
so when there are low tides then you feel comfortable because your sailing will be smooth but when there are high tides yes then you feel something discomforting in your body and also there is a feel of insecurity whether you are able to reach or not or something like that when we travel in the flight across the skies then at times it comes down and they call it is probably air bags or something like that air pockets yes and they call it air pockets and something like <laughs> something happens in 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 the stomach you know during that the time so journey may not be always comfortable there will be always ups and downs when there is a down you call it is sorrow sad pain and when it is up then you may feel it is joy or happiness and comfort and punyam and when it's going down it's papam when it's going up it is punyam but it's a journey yes it's a journey at times yours may be a motor boat and sometimes then you have to use your own energy to take the boat sometimes some helper may be there but at times you may have to make your journey on your own but it's a journey what is the purpose of that journey then and who made it you know that is what we have to we are supposed to discuss <laughs> friends it is said the purpose of a life is something like the driver and the vehicle what is the purpose of the of the person who is in the car when the car is on the road to reach the destination safely number 1 and for that what he needs to do he has to drive he has to he he should drive no way he can stop it because there are vehicles friend <laughs> there are vehicles fourth and the signal is green and you are there in the middle can you stop it can you say no my car is not moving then four people come and just they they tow it to say, to a side or our uncle may come to you and says hi my friend <laughs> and you have to pay this much <laughs> so when you are on journey and when it's on the road or when your boat is in the waters somewhere in the middle of the of the sea or a river or a lake you have no other way than just putting your efforts to reach the other end reaching the other end is to fix up the goal but for other end you need not do anything all that you need to do is to drive the boat safely to drive the car safely your goal may be reaching this tatwa lok building from kuchilambal kalyan mantapam you can do anything to kuchilambal kalyan mantapam or you can't do anything with the tatwa lok building all that you need to take care of the signals whether it is right or, or green whether it's showing left or straight or whether the front car is moving right or back car is not hitting us and this care is pretty much essential and you need to pay all your attention towards the surroundings the traffic in which you are and if you if you drive safely knowing the rules and regulations definitely you reach the tatwa lok building maybe a little bit here and there that's fine but you reach for which you need to master the rules on the road or on the waters or in the sky there is a lesson in short hand 121 lesson you because it's about the short hand right 
they are talking about writing abilities they they inculcate writing abilities there they say if you wish to write at a high rate you must master the rules so as to follow them fully and be able to apply them on all occasions it's the fundamental rule for a person who wants to write well so that at least he can read it it seems there was a doctor who wrote a letter to his wife immediately she sent it to the medical shop <laughs> because he is only the one can read the doctor's writing <laughs> not even the doctor <laughs> so you should not write like that <laughs> you have to at least retrieve your own writings so also in a life when you are reading a li leading a life you no way can stop your journey here and about the goal you need not do anything just our friend mentioned before you need not do anything with regard to the moksha because moksha dance on its own moksha is like sun if you want to see the sun you sat in the tapas and stirred meditation do you think that sun comes up or if you spend a few thousands or lakhs of rupees do you think the sun comes up no what you have to do for the sun to come up nothing nothing he comes on his own when he thinks it is appropriate and for him you can do anything you need not do anything even you do something also you never cares for that that is the moksha what you have to do for moksha you need not do anything for the attaining moksha moksha comes when the time comes but you need to remember something something like when the sun comes on his own at a appropriate time then you should not close your eyes you should keep yourself awaken and you should not be confined to your own room you should come out of the room and you should not bend your head down you have to raise your head and you have to open your eyes and uh, the important is there should not be any clouds so even sun comes on his own and if there are clouds you just can't see the sun and when the sky is clear sun comes on his own without spending a single pi so also the moksha comes on its own but what you need to know is when you want to see the things come out of the room and then keep your eyes open know the time when the sun comes out from the elderly people who know something about the timings of the sun to come because sun is not visible in all places the same time for you sun may be visible after 6 am and before 6 pm but in places like you know the south pole and you may not be able to see sun during that time and when you are in the north pole the times may differ may vary so you need to know from the local people whom we call as uh, the desikas how when you need to experience the dazzling sun but he comes on his own and you can experience that so also the moksha comes on its own 
and you need not do any effort for the moksha at all. Some people think, you know, we do something and we quit the body. I think quitting the body is automatic. You don't do anything, still you quit the body. You do something, still you have to quit the body. <laughs> and that's automatic. Anyway, one day, definitely the Yamaraj is always <laughs> behind us. And then he is always with the, with the, with uh, etiquette reserved for us you know <laughs> because the day he sent you here he gave you written ticket in hand you know? yeah and we have to we have to accept it anyway but all that we know is how to act during this time when we are in the journey in the process of our journey how to drive the car or how to lead the boat in the turbulent waters when it is high tide then how to drive it when it's low tide how to drive it and if you know that rule now come back to the lesson in shorthand if you wish to lead a high life you must master the rules so as to follow them fully and be able to apply them on all occasions the same rule even for a life for which all the sastras were written by the great sages all the itihasas written by sages like Valmiki and Vedavasa and all the dharma sastras were presented to us by the great sages let's not go into many details like that but we will take an example of the great avatar purusha Lord Sri Rama we know the story of Rama very well and we don't consider that the life of Rama is something written by a poet sitting on the on his desk uh, just by creating something uh, in his own no it's a history of course it's past history it's ancient history we say we take the story of Rama where he being a person met with many people experienced a variety of situations some are joyful some are enjoyable and some are painful really sorrowful when Rama was requested by the sage Viswamitra and father said yes you can go Rama went without any question followed Viswamitra because father said because father said he wanted to follow the sage Viswamitra and it's, it's so exciting to hear the words of Rama saying that after finishing the Viswamitra's Yaga he prostrated before his Acharya and said, Hey Acharya, Agnyapaya Yadheshtam Vai, Sasanam Karavava, Kim, you asked for one, we came to one bonus. Imau, Munisardula, Kinkarau, Samupasthitau, you asked for one, we came to, you asked to protect your Ignya, but we came as your kinkaras. You know who is kinkara? Who obeys the instructions to the dot is called kinkara. Probably it is seen only with Yamaraj, not with others. So they are having the fixed name like Yama kinkaras. You know, other kinkaras are not that good. It seems so. The kinkara name was not given to all of them. And the name came like one who goes to a, his boss and listens to him, follows that strictly and gets back to him and says, Hey, Acharya, yes, what can I do? Still, what can I do? Kim Karavani, Kim Karavani, Agnyapaya. So when he says, do this, did exactly what he expected, not what he said. And then came back and said, yes, that is done. And what can I do, sir? Said something not, you know, not limited to the 
thinks what he did and what he said who makes his boss feel always happy with his service is called kinkara rama said kinkaro sam upasthito why viswamitra you asked for just 10 days you would ask for 10 years with you i would have, i would have served you sir does viswamitra took rama and of course brought back with a jack pot like sita <laughs> but my friends later dasharatha wanted to give kingdom to rama it's a joyful thing right accept it the very next morning and his step mother ordered him to go to the forest without a trace of sorrow in his face and not speaking anything again is that he just left for forest no sorrow no joy but did what he supposed to do while he was in the forest served the sages and where there are people unruly people control them help the human beings help the nature help the animals and even help the demons vibhishana you know he led his life in serving people in serving the souls around service is the probably ultimate purpose as long as you are living you need to serve and you need to serve to the extent they need not the greed people are in greed you know they expect many things from you may but you need to serve them to the extent they need that but without an expectation rama helped sugriva never expected anything from him but sugriva followed him he served vibhishana not expecting anything but vibhishana dedicated his life for rama and probably that was the reason why even animals plants loved rama a very interesting sloka written by valmiki observing the things that happened probably during the time when sumantra returns after dropping rama on the banks of ganga and informs to the king dasharatha about what was happening there when he was returning he wanted to come back soon but he was waiting for rama's uh, probably you know coming back re arrival but it didn't happen so he thought it is it was his duty to report the king that rama crossed the ganga so came back after 6 days he met with dasharatha then he was explaining what he has seen in the forest because sumantra was not interested to leave rama alone there in the forest and go back so he was waiting 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 so also the horses he was you know uh, having to the chariot they also were not interested in coming back somehow with a with a tremendous force he turned them back and brought them to the kingdom but they were walking slow it was sunny day and he was thirst he wanted to drink some water but he didn't find any water there is water but it is boiling he wanted to take shade under some tree but no leaves it was vasanta rutu vasanta rutu means full spring blooming forest because just before dasharatha was saying punya pushpita kanana everywhere there is bloom flowers and everything is so wonderful that was the time when rama left for forest but while returning back to his ayodhya sumantra found api vrikshaha parimlanah sa pushpa ankura korakah upatapto dakah nadyah 
palvalani saramsija. What, Su- what Sumantra observed then was all the trees was withered totally. When he was about to reach a river to drink water, it was sunny day, and because since five days he has no food and water, he wanted to drink some water about to reach the river, but there was vapor, you know, from the rivers. As if we open the cooker, you know, the vapor comes up. Thus the upataptho dakaha nadyaha. I am not able to reach even to the near vicinity of the river. That was how the water was born. Why? Not because of the sun. Because of the separation from Rama. Friends, what I would like to mention here, when a man leads his life for serving the fellow beings, maybe human beings or maybe animals or maybe the nature, then the nature responds for you. We have seen that. Somewhere we were talking about this in Hyderabad. After a couple of years when we were there, a lady brought big leaves and just kept there and went. Usually people when they come they bring some fruits. But some lady brought some some leaves, you know, big branches of leaves and kept there. We thought, what is lady is doing a funny activity? I am a goat <laughs> to eat the leaves. And after some time again that lady came and said, Swamiji, did you see the leaves I offer you? I said, what are they? And she said, Swamiji, they are Tulsi leaves. Tulsi? They speak. She said, yes, Swamiji. The other day I heard from you that if you sit with a tree or with a plant and just show some sort of concern, love, that tree or plant responds. I started doing that. I started sitting with my tulsi plant every day, chanting some stotras and bhajans with it, and I do this, I did it all through this two years time. And Swami, these are the results. The leaves became this big. (laughs) We were amazed. We speak, but we never practice. (laughs) <laughs> that lady practiced and that was the result so in this Kali Yuga in this polluted Yuga when the trees are responding the plants are responding like that then what to say about the Treta Yuga when Dharma was you know in three feet so Rama was loved by the nature by the plants, by the animals, by the by the squirrel, even by insects, like you know, small things. Because why? Not because Rama was God. It's because he served them. He shared his love. He shared his joy and he tried to share their sorrows. You know there is a rule. Joy from you shared is your joy doubled. When you share your joy with with as many people as possible or with as many creatures as possible, your joy will be multiplied like that. Rama is only one. But he tried to share his joy with all the monkeys and with all the rakshasas and the sages and of course with the nature and the whole monkey kingdom supported Rama and they were just ready to give not just ready they they literally gave their life in service of Rama Vibhishna gave his life for Rama everyone in that sense so you are one sharing but ultimately it's a business <laughs> it's good business also right Rama gave one joy but he got back thousands and thousands of joy from all beings around giving joy but my friends 
taking sorrows from others your sorrows will be halved sorrow shared is sorrow halved joy shared is joy doubled we do that we do practice it but in a different way <laughs> whenever just you know we have sorrow we try to push it into others we try to when somebody is joyful you try to take it grab it like anything we are all trying to share of course but in a different way but it should be like you try to share your joy and you try to share the sorrows of others that makes you to become god rama did not say that he was god he always said i am a man atmanam manusham manye ramam dasharadhatmajam i am i am mr rama son of dasharadha native of ayodhya and in bharat clear address is there then how can i become god devatas came to him and said hey you are lord narayana no one else but he said no i want to be a man that's it friends unfortunately those who are human beings not having any abilities knowing that they are incapable of many things they 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 play god it is it's more evident nowadays but one who helped the entire universe when devatas came and said you are none else than lord narayana himself then he said no no don't make me god at all i want to be one with you i want to be a man atmana manusham manye let me be a human being that's fine you you understood what i said be a man be a real man you will become more than god you will be adored and worshiped even by devatas probably you must have heard many stories of devatas and asuras asuras always were teaching lessons to devatas but devatas whenever there was a risk used to come to human beings to take help they came down all the way to the earth took the help of human beings you understood so when you are a real man even devatas even devatas like indra and brahma they will come to you down to this earth to seek your help when you are god be careful about asuras <laughs> when you when you want to be a devata you must be always careful because you know y- y- there will be ravanas there will be hiranyakashipus and there will be hiranyakshas and so on and so forth when you are a devata but when you are a man even those devatas also come to you to take your help you can you can become you can become greater soul than right than devatas so sharing and serving try to share your joy try to share the sorrows of others one and as long as you are here serve don't help others you understood the difference many people come to us and say swami ji can i do some help some people go to temples i'm helping god every week i go to temple and help there my god you are helping gods how great you are poor bard needs your help who creates this entire universe just with his sankalpa hmm so kamayata बहुस्याम प्रजा ये ये थी। He took a संकल्पा 
and made this vast universe within no time to make this a hall probably a lot of time problem mr tikan but for him no machines no cement no chips no iron no water and no instruments he made the whole thing happen within no time and for such a god you are helping ha huh? swami ji i help god you know every week this is a uh, this is the ego we have so don't think that you are helping someone try to understand that you are you are serving people or probably by serving you are serving yourself you are helping yourself you serve others and you help you help yourself you make your journey more comfortable by service but while serving yes at times there will be ups and downs all that we need to practice do sadhana like mantra it should be helping you in keeping the shell powerful so that you need not get disturbed in spite of many turbulences if you are safe in the shell and then you will be always safe it may cross through the air pockets it may cross through different tides or it may cross through some bumps on the road fine but as long as the shell is strong your journey is fine so all the practices recommended in our shastras as rama showed his life as an example is to make the shell more and more stronger but goal is to come out of the shell and the shell is called as karma bandhanam this is the shell in which we are for which you need to do things in a right fashion you must master the rules so as to follow them fully and be able to apply them on all occasions not during some time when you sit before deities in your puja mandir no always day in and out while eating yes while snanam yes even while sleeping yes you need to you need to feel it you need to apply the rules that is serving and sharing so if we know that and if we make ourselves stronger if we make our shell stronger and definitely yes your journey will be done and tasya tavadeva chiram yavan navimokshiye releasing from the karma bondage is is the end for this journey and you reach that eternal bliss some people may define it in different ways like whether being with god or becoming god whatever it may be so now it's it's only there we used to meet with one swami ji kurtalam swami ji the trivikram ramananda bharati swami ji you no know, he used to swami ji you know you vaishnavites and we are all one you know why i say this for us practicing things and doing things here is pretty much common only the difference is there you know after crossing this you go to this side and we go to this side it's fine but till then let's travel together <laughs> we liked we always used to like his statements you know so so jovial person he was and he used to say that and we used to believe in that also always so my friends it's nice we took a lot of time from you and life is journey 
and the purpose is to serve and share things so use the mind use the heart not just mind use the mind and use the heart to serve and share always for serving you need to have the mind for sharing you need to have the heart if you miss one you miss the whole if you achieve one you achieve both let's put to acharyas to bless us in reaching our goals we offer our mangala sasanams to all the devotees who are patient enough in you know listening to us and also in sharing your ideas and also we do mangala sasanams to the uh, vidya bharati satsang a uh, abhinava vidya teertha sangham yeah in organizing the beautiful programs like this uh, and giving good satsang to the seekers we pray to acharyas to bless you all to uh, be always in their shade and grow well jai shri man